Hello, I'm Chris Richmond, and today I'm delving beneath the streets of a North Norfolk market town to investigate a local legend of secret tunnels. Now, at some point we've probably all heard stories about secret tunnels somewhere. Here in Norfolk particularly, there are many stories of tunnels said to have once linked various historic buildings, sometimes tens of miles apart. Then there are the associated tales of the fiddlers who ventured into them, the sounds of their instruments fading into the mists of time. Whilst many of these stories are far-fetched, and nothing more than local legend, in the town of North Walsham, a recent study has revealed that there may indeed be some truth in the legend. Archaeology student and local lad Jake Brader has been working on a project to uncover the mysteries surrounding tunnels, which are said to run beneath the town's marketplace, linking various buildings via a network of cellars. What's most intriguing is that these cellars are said to predate the existing buildings, constructed after a great fire ravaged the town at the turn of the 17th century. With the current Georgian marketplace built on these older foundations, what secrets still lie beneath the shops? Jake has invited me on a special subterranean adventure to find out more. Right, so here we are on our way to North Walsham, tucked away in the northeast of the county, once boasting two railway stations and home of Norfolk's only canal. However, I know very little about the subterranean history of the town, so it'll be interesting to see what Jake's got in store for us. I meet Jake outside the imposing St Nicholas Church, said to be the oldest surviving building in the town. Right, hello Jake. Now there are stories of tunnels all over Norfolk. So how did you discover here in North Walsham there is actually truth in the legend? Okay, so um, I, I grew up here in town and uh, younger here, being younger here in town you hear a lot of stories of, of tunnels that sort of, absurd stories, tunnels that sort of go out to Bacton or or Napton, miles and miles worth of tunnels. Um, stories that you struggle to believe even as a kid, but uh, so growing up I thought I'd, I'd see if there's any truth behind those tales, if, see if there's anything that is actually behind the, the myths and legends that you get um, around these sort of towns. It's, you're quite right, it's not just here in North Walsham, um, Stalham, uh, Sheringham, there are story, tales of tunnels all over Norfolk and it's quite interesting as to how they form and how they how they become sort of that local legend that everyone enjoys talking about. So I thought, yeah, I'd, I'd undertake a, a project to, to look into it, really. All right, so tell us a bit more about this project. OK, so um, North Walsham is, is a very, very old town. The, the church behind us here is um, it's one of the biggest parish churches in the county, and, but there's not much else that survives from the medieval period. There's potentially one or two buildings, but nothing that's been catalogued as being medieval. So you'd expect to find something in the town. I'm, I'm an archaeologist, or I'm, I'm an archaeological student, I should say, um, and it's, it's a passion of mine. So when, when you get the opportunity to look underground at cellars and tunnels um, without having to dig, it's quite an opportunity. So I thought tying it all in together, you, you could come up with quite an interesting um, community project looking at many different things, the, the tales, the, the, the myths and legends and how they came around, the, the history of the town that has potentially been lost and forgotten, um, the archaeology, the, uh, the, the tunnels themselves, why they're there, the, um, the, the connected cellars that you find all, all along the, the high street here. Now are these just a, a collection of interconnected cellars or would they have had another purpose? Now this is, um, is going to be the, the, one of the big questions to try and answer really. Uh, it's first of all trying to establish how old the cellars are. When it comes to architecture and, and dating of cellars, it's actually a really difficult practice. And by no means am I qualified as, a, as an architectural archaeologist or specialist, so that, that, that means I have to bring in extra people to try and, um, try and date some of these cellars for me. And once you've got a date, you can try and figure out which ones were here first and which ones may have been linked. It might purely be a case that over the years, cellars have been um, expanded, uh, built upon, um, walls knocked through, where they've joined up 
one or two sellers. I know of a few examples under the high street where um, you've, you've got very old sellers connected to quite new sellers. Um, and it's, it's, it might just be that over centuries of expansion, you, you end up with this underground network of passageways that have all been bricked up. But then some of them, some of the, sell, some of the sellers have, have portals that lead right under the high street, connecting shops either side of the high street. So the, the purpose behind those is, is really quite obscure. Nobody's quite sure why that would have been a, uh, a, a thing to do. Um, there are theories and ideas for walking around the town late at night. It helps get banking goods from one side of the street to the other. Um, but a lot of the theories revolve around just theories, really, and there's nothing more to, to prove that one way or the other. So what can we expect to see? Uh, today, um, a few sellers so far we've lined up. Um, the, the first one is, is quite a typical sort of industrial age um, market town seller. It's, it's, it would have been lived in once upon a time during the 1800s. It would have been either home to the shopkeeper or um, to a private resident. Um, and quite a few of the sellers are like that, so there are quite a few interesting features within these sellers that show home life, which you wouldn't expect to find in such a dark and dingy place. Um, another seller that we're going to be looking at today is potentially one of the oldest structures in the town that survived the, uh, the fire um, in, uh, from 1600. Uh, this seller is, is potentially 700 years old, um, but I haven't got proof of that yet. That's something that I'm still working on, uh, but that's, that's quite an interesting, quite an interesting building. All right, shall we go and have a look then? Yes, yes, let's go investigate. Right. It's market day, and our first location is Page's Confectioners and Tobacconists. This traditional style sweet shop is a time warp in itself, but what lies beneath is much, much older. So this is, um, this is Colin Page's cellar underneath the Tobacconists on the horse from High Street. Um, this is this is the sort of industrial age one. This is where this would have been a home. This would have been where somebody lived, as extraordinary as that may sound. Um, a few features for here, for example, here we've got a bread oven, um, which is all connected through. A lot of the sellers have these old bread ovens. Um, I'm not quite sure how old they are. Uh, they are of considerable age. I mean, um, the range through here. This is this is quite an interesting feature. Um, this shows, well, home life really. Um, <laughs> still old bits and bobs laying around, and just on the wall here you've got evidence of vaulting, and and here you've got a good example of um, a vaulted archway on the top, um, and then a bricked up entrance there. Uh, now that that could possibly just be the back of the the bread oven that we've just looked at, or it could be something different. It could be connecting through to the next cellar along, and that's. That's the sort of thing that you're trying to understand, trying to investigate um, when doing this. Now through here is, is very fascinating. It's a bit dark and dingy, um, but this is, this is where it really starts becoming fascinating. Um, we're currently underneath the footpath outside the shop, um, and this here is quite evidently a bricked up portal. Um, how far underneath the high street it would have gone no idea. Really don't know. Until we can get a drill through there to find out, we won't we won't ever know. Um, but the interesting thing is you've got bricked up portals on either side. Um, there's one just here that is clear as day really. Um, that's been bricked up. Now that could have been bricked up 50, 60 years ago, could have been bricked up longer ago. Um, there's just no way of really telling. So a lot of it is trying to piece together as many clues as you can to, to end up with a theory that you can work with and then you can work on trying to prove that theory uh, when it comes to stuff like this but yeah this is the first steps of uh, quite a long project. It is said at one time the shop was once shared with a neighbouring property. Now as stationers this building has undergone many changes over the centuries so what will we discover beneath it? Right, so this is under the print shop next to um, next to the first cellar we went down, uh, which was Colin Page's uh, tobacconist. This is the next cellar along. So you're talking for this bit a similar age to the, the two chambers that we saw before. Um, this one has had extensive modification over the years and might possibly be much older than Colin's. So this, this room here, I... It's hard to tell. This has had so much modification, so much change, 
this follows sort of the, the shop floor plan um, of the shop above but the interesting bit gets when we well, comes when we get underneath the high street um, so here roughly rectangular in shape you've got similar features uh, around here uh, another bread oven um, this is what I mean a lot of these sellers have bread ovens this is an old fireplace um, so you can tell that this again might have been lived in once upon a time but it's so convoluted and, and different that you find you've got many different features um, so through here for example is just com something completely different still this is a vaulted chamber um, designed to take a lot more weight and pressure um, and you typically find these um, sort of from the medieval period onwards. This, this could again be uh, 15th century. There's no real way of telling how old this, this space is um, when it comes to brick analysis that takes quite a specialist and local knowledge. Um, bricks in Norfolk have been used for, for centuries, centuries and centuries, the earliest use being in the, the 1300s. So it, it comes down to brick size and, and uh, ceramics so that that takes that that's what sort of the dating of the cellar would take um, but the features within it are quite unique quite interesting these these are side cellars um, sometimes known as butteries uh, you find that you can sometimes get a temperature difference between one space and another because of the the, the area um, within them uh, so they, they've been used for storing materials at different temperatures or simply just to extend the cellar outwards um, without having to build a whole new vault like this. Uh, so they're quite common and you'll see in the next chamber along we've got a few more of those. Evidence of bricked up doorways like here for example or features that, that are just unrecognisable due to the age of them um, without taking a chisel to that wall you won't really know what that was. If I provide a bit of light on this particular wall you see evidence of charring maybe um, if this cellar was of the right age that would that would link into the uh, the great fire of the town in 1600 um, so it's little things like that that are quite exciting really uh, ancient plaster and wood and it's just it's it's a lot of investigation um, so yeah this is this is into the second vaulted chamber um, we'll come through where the light is uh, this is very similar and of the same age as the one next door. Now it's hard to tell the, the, the connection between these two, whether these two were built connected or whether these were two separate shop units or market stalls um, side by side. After the fire of 1600 um, much of the town was destroyed and there wasn't much left at all. So what you find is you get a lot of uh, wooden structures being put up as temporary buildings and all along the marketplace, the marketplace is known as um, the shops are known to be the same size as the market stalls that occupied them for quite a few decades after the fire. And the, the brick structures that replaced them are a direct copy of those floor plans. So it could be that these are the same size as the original market stalls. What it would take is, is precise measurements to be taken and then compared with um, known market uh, stall sort of footage during, or you know, square footage during that time. Um, that's all research to be done yet. Uh, but other than that, it's the, the years and years of, of messing around with this. This is quite original. This, I mean, this bro brickwork is obviously um, later than, than this brickwork. You can just tell through the, uh, what it looks like, really. But here, for example, we have wooden beam that is completely and utterly mouldy. Uh, I mean, that takes a long time to, to degrade that far. In actual fact, it almost looks burnt again, which it could well be from um, from the fire. Uh, we've got another bricked up doorway here. I don't think you'll catch that too well on camera. So here we see bricked up portal. Now that is bricked into this this vaulting, so that is obviously uh, this continues through. Um, how far that continues through, that would take a drill bit and a, a camera really to to see behind there, but. The, the, the walls in here are the most fascinating, how they're constructed of flint and brick, um, which the rest of the tray, the rest of these cellars are made out of brick, so you have to investigate what the connection is there, why these walls are constructed differently to the others. Um, again, it's different phases, different building time frames, it's, it, it, it's all a big mystery to solve. Um, but bit by bit you can start to unravel it. It's, it's part of the, the context of archaeology really, being able to understand what came first and then everything after in stages. So yeah, that's, that's this toilet now. But... Our third location is a rather trendy boutique to the west of the marketplace. 
an area said to be the oldest part of the town, with the building holding clues suggesting a pre-Georgian past. Cellar number three so far. Um, this one is, yeah, there's not much to say about this cellar. It's, it's a proper hodgepodge of ages and it's, it's really hard to tell the, the, the exact age of this, of this construction. Um, you've got bricks of different phases, you've got flints, you've got cobbles, uh, odd architectural features that you can't really explain. Um, we'll go through to the second tube. Um, so yeah, this is, it, you could have told, you could tell that once upon a time it would have been roughly square in shape. Um, possibly bigger as well. Um, I mean, you've got brick walls like this, brick and flint walls actually in this case, that, that might be later, it might have been bricked up through here, so you would have had more depth. It's hard to really tell. Um, this takes a lot of investigating and picking, and without any truly interesting features, it's, it's not worth the time to, to investigate further as of yet. Um, just behind here, you've got us. Uh, the old original entrance, I think, which would have been the staircase. Now for a space this big, it doesn't really make sense to have a proper nicely built um, brick staircase. So my feeling is that it probably was a bit bigger uh, once upon a time, but that's about it really. Uh, original floor beams are in place, which are quite nice. Uh, for example, these here, nice architectural detailing. Um, that's quite old. Um, uh, there's no, I'm not quite sure exact age on those. I know the roof line of this particular building uh, is medieval. And whilst that roof line is disguised by the more modern Norfolk pan tiles, inside the historic timbers have been exposed and incorporated into a stylish loft conversion. The only room that isn't a cellar today. <laughs> so this is, um, this is the roof space uh, on the third floor. And uh, this is potentially one of the oldest rooms in the, in the town. I'm not quite sure of the, the exact age of these timbers, but it's, it's certainly late medieval, post medieval, um, predating a lot, of the, a lot of the structures around the town. Uh, I have to look for witch marks on the wood, which would give us a, a rough date of late 1600s. Um, I'm sure a, uh, an architectural archaeologist might be, archaeologist may be able to give it a more precise date, but the, the, the fact that this roof space is so old helps give us an idea of how old the cellar beneath this building may be, um, or at least its earlier stage. So this, this building would have originally been thatched, so it would have shown its age from the exterior, but the, the interior of this building is apparently much older than the, the exterior. So, for example, on the official records for this building, it's listed as being 17th century, or 1700s. Um, I think the building is probably considerably older than that. Whilst the age of this building is debatable, next door is the Old Feathers pub. Constructed after the fire in the early 17th century, it too has a historic cellar. Used in more recent years as an underground bar, the cellar has been the subject of many local tales, being cited as the Old Town Jail and rumours of a tunnel, linking it with the old courthouse once located on the site of the nearby hotel. The entrance is bizarrely via an adjacent infill building, once said to be the location of the town's stocks. So, um, fourth and final cellar, one of the more interesting ones. Um, this has the potential to be one of the oldest cellars in the town. Um, there are many features in here that point to it being older than any of the other cellars we've looked at today. Um, Gothic archways are the, just sort of the start of that really. When you look at the... Uh, well, we'll look at this, this side cellar here first, for example. Um, the, the style of archway that, that is used here is, is known as Gothic. Uh, in its styling, so the uh, the arch comes to a point at the top. This is uh, this is original. This is an original feature. But everything past this point has been chopped and changed. So you've got the second archway here. Um, this incorporates a, an extremely old timber, um, which quite interestingly is all charred and burned on the underside here. Uh, the reason why that's interesting is it might allude to the Great Fire of North Walsham, which happened in 1600. You, you had about 118 houses and buildings burnt to the ground and flattened 
Most buildings back then would have mainly been timber, um, timber, wattle and daub, that sort of thing. Um, so timbers that could have been saved would have been, and this might be an example of that, where you've got a timber that's been charred on one or two sides maybe, um, salvaged from the, the collapsed buildings and reused into um, creating this second chamber here. And what this is, this is the floor level of the pub next door. Um, this would have all been part of the same pub, the Feathers pub, uh, which is documented as being about early 1600s. And I reckon that when they've built the pub and the floor level has cut through this, this archway, they've installed this timber to act as a support level for the wall. Um, and also gain access through the floor, which is directly in between this archway, <clears throat> this archway and the next. And you see this archway in here is your more typical rounded and slightly curved archway. Uh, that is more typical of the, of the 1600s. So I, I should imagine that this dates from early 1600s, um, as well as the next archway in it. It's, been changed with the building of the Feathers Pub next door. Uh, it, it, it is entirely bizarre and different to all the other cellars that we've looked at. And um, if I'm going by any of the other cellars I've looked at in Norwich, uh, it could quite possibly be from 1300s onwards. I, I would not 100%, but there is a there is quite a high chance that this is medieval, the cellar, um, and that would be quite extraordinary. It's quite the task when trying to unpick this, this cellar. It's been through so many different changes over the years. Um, you could, yeah. The cellar continues beyond into a second chamber. So, up into the uh, other half of the cellar. All there would have been one cellar once upon a time, if it wasn't for this prefab wall in the middle. Um, We've got three more of the uh, side cellars in here, um, all slightly different sizes, all made in sort of slightly different ways. They're quite kooky, really. This helps explain the story uh, about this place, which is um, it could have once been the town cell, uh, the, the town jail. There are stories of all these side cellars once being units where you would have had you know, bars across. Uh, the front of them making quite convenient cells. Um, how true that is, there's no proof, there's no, there's no evidence, but it's, it's one of the many tales you get about cellars like this. Um, origin stories that help explain what they might have been, sort of in, in, in time as memory is forgotten. Um, there, there, there are many stories of, of tunnels leading from this cellar through to the cellar of the King's Arms pub or the building next door, which was once said to have been the courthouse in the town. Uh, that, that was, that's long since gone. Uh, no real record surviving of that. There's no real way of telling until uh, we delve into the archives to see what records may exist. Uh, there is certainly no evidence of a tunnel here leading, leading sort of in that direction towards the King Ar King's Arms pub. But it is, it's easy to see how that sort of story would would, would unfold over the years, people coming down here and wondering what, what these side cellars once were, what they were used for. In some cases, there's evidence of metal spigots and the edges of these archways, which could have held doors, could have held bars. Um, there are many possibilities. What, what probably helps exacerbate that story is that just on the building outside, there's a small silver plaque which um, denotes the location of the town's stocks. Um, so, yeah, we, we have quite, a, quite an odd, odd set up here, quite an, an, an interesting feeling of, of, of an abstract nature. Um, these, these alcoves are just, they're different, they're different to every other cellar that we've seen. They're, they're unique, they, I don't really know how else to describe them really. There's, there's certainly a feeling you get down here that you don't get in any other cellar. Um, a feeling of age, potentially, the height of the roof might have, have a bearing on that. Um, it's, it certainly will be interesting to see what further investigation reveals. We'll, we'll just have to see. So whilst this cellar is indeed an earlier construction than the buildings on top of it, I think it's safe to say that the rumoured tunnel that ran from here to the former courthouse can be dismissed as nothing more than an urban myth. It's been an interesting day delving beneath the streets of North Walsham. 
but what's next for Jake and his fascinating project? Right, so we've still got a long way to go with proving some of these myths, so uh, what's next for the project? Okay, so um, I've done, well, sort of what's been done so far is phase one really, phase one and phase two, which was looking at sellers, um, seeing what's there, if there's anything at all. Uh, once that's been established, it's now looking at a bit more of the history, and I've, I've done that, I've put a lot of paperwork together, um, that's about to come out. Um, the next step will be, will be funding. Um, yeah, the last few weeks in uh, Historic England have just um, announced that they're going ahead with a, a three million pound funding for the uh, High Street Accessibility and Historic Fund, which will be um, hope, which will uh, my comp which my this project will be part of. It will um, uh, it, it will help fund those things that, that as a community we can't. Uh, we can't afford through the council, I can't afford through the Heritage Centre, so it, there's some quite exciting possibilities coming really, and, and that's, the, that's the next phase to start pushing it into the public mainstream, get it known about, um, part of the, part of the uh, aim of this, of this video. So yeah, that's, that's the next step, the next steps at least. So where can people find out more about this project? So in the next uh, next week or so, there'll be a, um, a report being published, 6,000 words I've put together that helps highlight what, what has been discovered beneath the high street. Um, uh, this report, this will be published on the, the North Walsham Heritage Archive website. Um, it'll be available through Facebook. There's a, there's a Facebook page for the uh, North Walsham Heritage Archive group. Um, and a search on Google should, should find it, no problem. So with some funding, this may not be the last we hear of the tales of the tunnels. Thanks for watching. Now for the obligatory closing paragraph. If you enjoy following my quirky, if slightly self-indulgent adventures, please don't forget to like and subscribe. This filmmaking lark just wouldn't be worth it without the support of watchers like you. Until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.